Hey guys, Scourge Demon here, and I am bringing you a series of Source SDK tutorials for Hammer Editor. Um, so, Hammer Editor is like the mapping program for the Source Development Kit. <clears throat> so, uh, and so when you first open up Source SDK, it will look like this. Um, the first time you open it up, it should basically um, just tell you that it's going to download the required files or whatever to set it up. Uh, you can get Source SDK through your Steam tools uh, under your library. So, oh, I see what Cake did there. So here's what we're going to do. Um, so the engine version, you want to make sure it's on Source Engine Multiplayer, and the current game is CSS. You're going to want to map uh, for Gary's mod with CSS as well because it takes a long, complicated process to set up Source SDK for Gary's mod, and it only adds like five new entities. So everybody else just sticks with CSS and it works fine in Gary's mod. So when you first open it up, it blah 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 blah. It should say Hammer World Editor. But I gotta close this one over here. Okay, so mine's gonna give me errors because, anyways, uh, it should just look blank like this. Nothing's in here. You'll be like, well, there's not even tools. How am I supposed to get started? File new. And there will be four grids here, well, three grids, black window. The black window I'll get to in a second. Uh, the, four, the three grids are top grid, or overhead view, uh, side view, and front view. And the overhead view is basically just like a top-down perspective of what you're making. Uh, and then the side view is the side view per, uh, perspective, and then the front view is the front view perspective. Everything is drawn in 3D by using 2D planes. So basically a little bit of geometry involved. Not too difficult though. In fact, you can actually just make, you could just make any map you wanted without having to use the front view, but the front view is helpful sometimes. If there's stuff blocking the other views from fine precision. So I'm gonna go over the buttons real quick. So this is your selection tool. This is pretty self-explanatory. You use it to select blocks, move them around. Um, you could draw, uh, find out lengths and all that stuff. And then there's the magnify tool, which is for magnifying on your grid or zooming out on your grid. Camera tool, which is a little bit strange. Um, I think you use it in the grid. I don't really use it though. Yeah, okay, so um, there's an easier way of doing that though, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. <clears throat> so we don't need our camera tool. Uh, we have Entity Tool, which is if you want to make something like an Info Player Terrorist, which is just like a T, and you can also make a CT. You can also make props, um, static props, movable props, breakable props, lighting, sound effects, um, all of that stuff. Then you have the block tool, which is probably the tool you're going to be using the most, besides the selection tool. And the block tool is used just to create blocks as so. Uh, you draw out your block, press enter, whatever, and you have drawn a block. And it'll look like that. And that is basically the foundations of what you're going to be building off of for your map. Then there's the texture, the toggle texture application tool. I just call it the texture application tool. When you open it up, you can you can uh, uh, texturize each individual side of a, a cube or shape or whatever you're making, and you can change the textures. There's the texture browser. You can put in filters and keywords to find what you're looking for. Uh, and then also inside of the texture tool is the displacement tool which is if you want to make, let's say, a mountain, you can, um, you can make little uh, vertices that you can use to uh, add to or remove from the land masses. Then there's the Apply Current Texture, which is basically just like the te uh, texture application tool, except it just applies whatever texture you have selected. Right now it's dirt, which is the default. Then there's Apply Decals, which is a little strange. Uh, I haven't really used it, not really any need to. Uh, let's try it. Yeah, see, it, it it's weird. 
Um, basically, you can apply textures wherever you want to apply them if they're a decal. So, for instance, if we had, uh, let's say, let's look up spray, and then we took like this crying baby, and then put that down, there would be a crying baby, which is kind of strange, just in the middle of that. It's kind of handy, but only if you want to do like transparent stuff, like paintings and all that crap. Fly overlays, uh, not really going to need to use this. It's it's kind of a strange tool. Uh, not really going to get into it right now. Then there is this tool called the clipping tool, and there are multiple ways to clip objects, but this is my favorite. You can drag something like that, uh, delete one of the sides, or keep both of the sides and just cut it in half, and then you can make all sorts of fun shapes. So, yeah, fun shapes, anyhow. And you're going to be using that one a lot too, that's an important tool. And there's the vertex tool, which is like if you want to make, let's say, a ramp, you can combine these vertexes and those vertexes and be like, yes, I want to merge those. And then it'll give you a sort of rampy looking thing. The vertex tool is kind of cool, but you don't really need it. You can just use the clipping tool if you want to be more precise about it. Um, and those are basically all there is to this program. There's, it's really not hard at all. A um, couple more things to add. There are um, several tools up here you can use. One of them is the carve tool, and I'll show an example of that right now. Draw a block. Don't want it to be a baby's face. That's strange. Um, pick a dev texture. Here we go. So there's a block. And then let's say we want to cut a hole out of that block imprecisely. So then we go over here. We make a cylinder, whatever. Put it right there. We go to tools, carve. And as you can see, it just screwed it up really bad. All the cutting here. And it just cut a hole where that shape was. Kind of handy, but the if I were you, I would just use the clipping tool because it can make a mess of your shapes. And it can do it pretty fast. I used to try to do that with doors when I was really new to this and it would just screw up my doors and everything would be all imprecise and give me problems later on. So just go with the clipping tool. That The clipping tool is your best friend. Um, some more things. You can also replace textures, um, choose different shapes for your blocks. Uh, you can do arches, blocks, cylinders, spheres, spikes, torses, and wedges. Uh, but you're mainly going to want to keep it on block. We got some more stuff over here. The selects, um, you can select groups, just selecting all of this, which is grouped together, select objects. So uh, for instance, select objects, you can select the multiple parts, and then they select solids, which is basically the same thing, but it, it's like even less combined. So you're gonna wanna stay on groups unless you're doing individual things to the um, object here. Other than that, there's really not much left. Um, when you first open up Source SDK, you might not be on the 3D texture polygons. You can do 3D wireframe, uh, 3D flat, uh, 3D textured, but you're going to want to stay on 3D shaded textured polygons, um, which should look good. Smoothing, don't want to get into that either. Not really necessary. So we're just going to do uh, shaded textured polygons, and that's fine. So, um, this is just an introduction. Uh, there's a couple more things there are to learn along the way, and I'll show that to you. This is just basically an introduction to what the tools basically do in the simplest terms. Uh, if you're wanting to learn more, then keep on and keep on watching my tutorials, and I will see you guys in my next tutorial, which will be basic building block stuff um, for making... A, uh, actually I actually had to come back and remake this tutorial because the first one I screwed up, the very first one. So I've made two before, prior to this one. Um, this is the prologue though. So in the next tutorial you will be learning about, uh, basically you make a big room and learn how to texture things and learn how to add an entity so you can play. Um, 
and then in the one after that you learn about lighting and light boxes or not light boxes <laughs> sky boxes and uh, I touch up on there a little bit so comment rate subscribe if you've liked this video and we're running out of time so I'll talk to you guys later so peace out guys